In this video we're looking at making an insoluble salt by a process called precipitation. Now in everyday life precipitation means hail, snow, rain, sleet, drizzle, all those sorts of things. But in chemistry it's got a more precise meaning and it means when you make an insoluble solid from a solution or from two solutions. Now here I have two solutions. We can tell that the chemical is fully dissolved because the solutions are clear. In this case, they also happen to be colourless, but the two words don't mean the same thing. Um, for example, copper sulphate is a solution. It's clear, you can see through it, but it's blue. In these two instances, they're both clear and colourless. A solution must be clear. So I'm going to put a bit of lead nitrate in a beaker, and then I'm going to add some potassium iodide, and we're going to make lead iodide. And as you see, it goes bright yellow, but also it goes cloudy, it's murky, you can't actually see through it anymore. So how are we going to get the insoluble solid out of that? Well to do that we need to filter it next. So filter paper, fold it in half, fold it in half again, sit it in our filter funnel and Hopefully, I'll just to get it to sit properly, you can sometimes just dampen it a bit so it sits in the filter funnel properly. And then we're going to filter off our yellow insoluble solid. Being insoluble, it shouldn't come through the filter paper. Um, you will find that a trace of it does in this case because the particles are so fine, but most of it will stay in the filter funnel. And so what we're going to end up with is mainly a solution of soluble products and our insoluble precipitate of lead iodide in the filter funnel. We'll just have a closer look at that. There you see that the yellow solid is already sort of sticking, gathering, collecting on the filter funnel. And what is filtering through is mainly transparent and colourless, mainly soluble stuff. There's a tiny trace of some yellow solid there, but not so much as we want to worry about. So that's the first stage in obtaining an insoluble salt, in this case lead iodide. Now this technique has some useful uh, everyday um, apl apl applications. One of them would be if we want to identify different dissolved ions. For example, if I thought I had lead ions dissolved in a solution, I could add a few drops of potassium iodide and that would immediately give that bright yellow precipitate. And that is um, a characteristic test for lead ions. But another and probably more useful application of precipitation is the way in which we can remove soluble metal ions from solutions. For example, we know that lead is very poisonous. Uh, and we wouldn't want, for example, a solution of lead ions going into a river. So if a factory that's been working with lead has got some waste products, some effluent, some waste water, rather than discharging it directly into a river, it would want to make sure it removed any toxic lead ions. And so they could do this by precipitation. First of all, mixing the chemicals together, the solid settles to the bottom. And once it's insoluble, of course... It can't be absorbed, you can filter it off, and you've got, as in this case, an almost clear solution coming out with little or no lead ions dissolved. So hopefully what's coming through the filter is pretty much harmless, or at least it's got no lead ions in it. And that's precipitation. Um, we're going to leave it for a while to carry on filtering, and then once it's finished filtering, we're going to rinse the solid with distilled water because the damp solid will still have some of the soluble chemicals, might be a bit of excess lead nitrate, or more likely, because I'm using a stronger solution, uh, some excess potassium iodide might be mixed in with the damp lead iodide. So I'm going to rinse it afterwards with distilled water. And now, uh, I, it's nearly finished filtering, so... Here's my solution. I'm just going to rinse it now thoroughly with distilled water. That will, as I say, get rid of any potassium iodide excess that is still in there. 
And once that has been left to dry, you could put it in an oven or just leave it in a very uh, in a warm place. You could dry it off, and you'd be left with pure lead iodide.